And welcome back to Rural America Live with Total Acre. And we are back in our last segment, of course, we talked with Randy and Alex about the team approach at getting them to their new world yield records. And now we're going to meet some folks that helped Alex get to that 206 bushels per acre of soybeans. And first up, we're joined in studio by the Vice President of Discovery and Innovation at Brandt. That's Brian Hashemeyer and ROI Biologicals, Cody Goins. Thank you so much, guys guys for being with us. Let's get to know you a little better. Brian, tell us about yourself. Yes, I've worked with Brant for 17 years now. Um, really started in formulation development and product development and uh, now I kind of manage the team doing a lot of product development but uh, spent a lot of time on micronutrients, uh, delivery of micronutrients and how to make them more effective and, and that's really where my involvement's been with uh, the Toll Acre group and Alex and it's been fun. I enjoy it. It's a uh, Micronutrients are very important, but people maybe don't understand them or gloss over them a little bit. And uh, it's just kind of a fun thing to learn about. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much been my background. All right. Brian, you already talked about this a little bit. Let's kind of go down the road. Let's get deep in the weeds, so to speak. And when you're talking about those micro and micro and macronutrients, what, what's the difference and what's the importance? Yeah, so a lot of people focus on nitrogen and potassium, the NPK, the, you know, the big ones, but micronutrients are just as essential for growing plants. And you think about the key micronutrients, oftentimes it's zinc, manganese, iron, boron. Those are the ones that, you know, people spend most of their time in. And they play a really important process in growing plants, um, processes such as photosynthesis, nitrogen assimil assimilization, um, plant stress. So even though they're in the plants in very small amounts, um, they're very critical to plants. And matching them up in the right geography is really important. Right. I think the graphic is showing a yeah. little bit of how, of how this works because a lot of us aren't scientists. A lot of us didn't study this in school. <laughs> yeah. So they, this graphic is really, I get a lot of questions about micronutrients and, and where do they start. And one of the best places to start is actually with your base fertility, your NPK fertility. Um, micronutrients aid in that. So. You know, we'll have a guy come to us want to address his zinc, but his phosphate's out of whack. You know, they got to start with a base NPK fertility, get that in line, and then we can address the micronutrients to make the most out of that. Now, there are guys that have critical micronutrient deficiencies. There's parts in the country that are iron deficient, like the Red River Valley, uh, parts in Indiana and Ohio that have manganese deficiency. The East Coast suffers from that. And those guys in those areas tend to know what they are. But when you take it to the level like Alex has and you start going from 50 to 100 to 250 bushels um, dealing with these correlations of micronutrients becomes really important because you can't get 206 bushels per acre with, with your average micronutrient program. But breaking it down this way, it's not just for these guys trying to break, break records. This is for, for everyday farmer, right? Just yeah, trying to make a living. Absolutely. Uh, when we look at um, ranges that you want to be in, um, they, there tends to be ranges that are adequate for everybody. But as these guys move up and higher yields, those ranges narrow. But even the average grower needs to assess what he has, look at his soil test levels, look at his history of his tissue test levels, and pull all that together. And if you look at this graphic that's up right now, it's showing basically the leaf analysis, and you go from deficient range to the sufficient range, which is that big green box. So guys are trying to stay in that, but you really need all those pieces of data to come together. But what we've really noticed is the sufficiency range boxes really narrow in as you narrow in on data. In this case, those smaller green boxes and the big green box are showing a high, high yield range, so guys from 90 to 120 bushels. And you can see they're still within the sufficiency ranges, but the, the ranges really start to narrow. So one of the things that a lot of guys struggle with is phosphate. And uh, this illustration right here is a really good one. It's overlaying tissue test ratio ranges, ideal ranges, over the top of the tissue test box. That big green box is a typical range you might find for zinc and phosphate. Um, but if you look at that darker green box, the square box, that's the high yield range. And then we overlaid on top of that the ideal nutrient ratios. And you can see when you use tissue test ranges in combination with the actual ratios, it really narrows where you want to be. So even for the guys that aren't yielding as much, there's value to be taken from this type of information. I was going to say, when, when you're breaking all this down for us, is this actually what you did on Alex's farm and the plot? Well, Alex had some unique things. I mean, he's, to grow that type of yield, you had a lot of uh, phosphate in the soil. So one of his challenges we get in his zinc to phosphate ratio. So he's trying to drive that zinc to phosphate ratio up because that's really important for uh, oxen production, leaf growth, flowering, and all that thing. So 
it's not just tissue test box ranges. It's also ideal ratios in, in the plant and the leaf. So he knew he had that issue and he was addressing it. The products themselves, let's talk about what you have that actually is, is getting farmers like Alex to that point. Yeah, so micronutrients, ability to be available in the soil is difficult. Farmers will relate to how difficult phosphate is to be available to in the soil. So having precision placement is really important and technology. So Brandt Smart System is our micronutrient line. And what really differentiates it from other products is its ability to get through the leaf. The leaf has a waxy layer on top of it that prevents absorption. So the smart system will absorb through the leaf much better and quicker, and then it'll actually move lateral in the leaf, which is really important. So when a droplet hits and it moves lateral, it's gonna come in contact with the leaf veins. So the leaf veins is what moves nutrients up through the plants, through the xylem, and down to the roots through the flow. So in order to get those products to work really well, they got to go through the, the leaf really well, and they got to move lateral. And these, these products do them as good as any product on the market space. We spend a lot of time on that, and that's why they perform so well. And Making sure it's going to do what it says it's going to do. And Terry, the, the cool part about our program, and I hate to make it sound like a sales pitch, but there's a lot of growers that recognize they have a deficiency. And there are a lot of companies out there that sell products. There's a you know, huge amount of options when you go out there and you buy products. The difference is, is what he explained. I mean, obviously they're using the smart technology to help make their products differentiate from what everybody else sells. But, you know, the cool part about the program is our software takes everybody's data. So meaning a guy says he's got a tissue sample deficiency. He then goes to his lab, or not his lab, his local retailer, and his retailer says, I've got you four options that you can use to correct that deficiency. Which one's a farmer going to buy? The cheapest one, right? That's typically the way they do it. And that product works, that's great. If it don't work, he just wasted some money and time. So the cool part about our software, not only does it tell you by yield what the deficiency is, it tells you which products move the needle. So if we've got people that are using products from all over the country, it tells you how much it moves the tissue sample from pre-application to post-application. Did it last for one week? Did it last for two weeks? And it's hard for me to wrap my head around, you know, people that don't pull tissue samples and, and have a yield associated with it. Nobody can look at that plant and tell what the levels are by just looking at the leaf. You've got to have some data, and you've got to have that data. And the next thing that people can't do, and that's very frustrating, is they can't always determine you know, does the products get into the plant and how much does it move the tissue sample values? If it doesn't move the tissue sample values, what are the chances of it affecting yield? So our data set is telling everybody's inputs what they did, how much it uses, or how much the plant's responding to those applications, and then they can choose these products. And one of the cool things is, Brant often, is one of those products that continue to move the needle. And so that smart system that he references obviously is working. So now, Alex, anything else in your um, planter box that you included in this record yield? Um, in the actual planter box, we used a dry inoculant on the seed, but with the planter, I mean, we put biologicals in furrow, we put humic acids and some fungicides, and then we add fertility with the planter as well, on, you know, to the side of it, not in the seed trench, but three inches to each side of the row. And uh, we put, you know, macronutrients and micronutrients there, as well as humic acids and sugars and other things. But so there are people out there that's listening that says he's doing what on beans? <laughs> people with corn yep. all the time do something in the furrow, and they may do yep. something in the tube or two if yep. they realize that it pays. Is it a novel idea that maybe if you no, manage absolutely. beans in such a way that they can respond and exactly? Get and that's why we did it. You know, we were pushing high yield corn and we're putting all these products in furrow and all these products to the side fertility and, and making these applications post emerge and and I'm it just didn't make sense to me why we wouldn't do that on soybeans as well if we're trying to push high yield beans I mean because they take up as much or more fertilizer than a corn plant and especially when it goes back to the late season management I mean a soybean about 67 percent of its fertility is taken up after the reproduction stage and I would say I would say 90% of farmers in the country, that's kind of when they pull the reins back is around R1, R2. And that's when we were really cranking up on the Brant sprays and, and the foliar fertility. So the key here, the take home is surround yourself with some smart people. Yep. 
We don't have to develop the micro, we don't have to develop the microbiome stimulation products or whether it's in the soil or the plant. We just need some good people. And I heard David probably coin this the, better, the best. You know, he always says he likes to have a team and a network of people that are contributing to his decision making process. And that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, it's our good pleasure always. I, I think I met Cody the very first time. He asked me to come speak to a group of growers, and the next thing you know, I heard about his biological company, and the rest has been history. We test a lot of products. We vet a lot of them, and same thing with Brant. One of the, they go back to the very beginning stages of when we first started pushing yield, and they've been an integral part of my success and David's success and now Alex's success.